Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning into the COVID-19 lockdown account. So today I've got Simon with me, and Simon is currently in lockdown with his partner and his stepson. Uh, Simon's also a freelance photographer who works very closely with the fitness industry himself as well. So, Si, how are we doing at the moment, mate? Yeah, not too bad, man. Not too bad. Getting uh, used to the new normal, as people are calling it. So, uh, just ticking along and muddling through it all. Yeah, uh, well, I can definitely... Uh, resonate with that i think it's just a strange time to try and get your head and get motivation at the moment as well which is just crazy what kind of things are you doing at the moment to to kind of stay motivated if anything well mate, i'm the same as you as i've come from heavily involved in the the fitness industry that all my work is uh based pretty much in gyms is i work as a freelance photographer but don't really do studio stuff because most of the time i shoot transformations physique stuff so a few years ago, I switched to entirely uh, gym-based shoots. So it's hit me similar way to similar way to you. There's literally no way for me to work on lockdown, nowhere for me to work. And then one of my bigger hobbies was a gym as well. So it's mm. been essentially sort of quite a life life-changing event. Even though hopefully it's for not not for too long, but it's been really impactful in that way. It's I guess it's to kind of taught you to change and switch around to what can and should be done yeah so like business wise in a lot of ways it's given me a chance to be more proactive on sort of the back end of things mm -hmm. so there's certain changes i've been able to make to improve uh, improve the service i can offer improve the quality and things like that and then it's just racking my brains every day as to what i can do to be productive yeah yeah i can imagine you're getting a lot from uh, people you've worked with in the past, people you've probably already booked in to work with, um, as well as the fact you've got, you probably have people that are in the best shape of their lives waiting for you to take photos of them the week after we went into lockdown. And they're just like, well, what do I do now? I can't go to the I gym. Mean, that, is, that is a gutting thing. You go in our industry, January and February are fairly quiet. Then it's about the 12 week mark from Christmas. Everybody's done their transformations. They're in their best shape. So, you know, March, April, May, mega busy months. And like you said, literally the weekend, the full lockdown was imposed. We had, I think, free transformation photo shoots. So a trainer will have 10, 15, 20 of their clients booked onto a group photo shoot where they showcase their results and you suddenly go, you know, we're not allowed any group gatherings. We're not allowed out. These people have worked their, their backsides off for sort of 12 weeks, got in the best shape of their lives. And it was heartbreaking not to be able to kind of go and do that. And that's one of my biggest buzzes is shooting the before and after pictures. So, I mean, hopefully we're going to be obviously be able to squeeze these people back in later in the year. But you know what it's like going back into peaking, you know, trying to maintain or whether they come back out and go back into shape. It's tough out there with what people do and how people kind of... Uh, respond to it mm, and you're not let's face it you're going to have to be a different level of motivation and you're going to have to have a pretty decent setup to be able to well you wouldn't be able to maintain that physique for seven weeks anyway not not at that level but to even be within uh, a couple of weeks off of that condition for seven weeks with no yeah. real equipment and motivation it's impossible there's no way I think the motivation is uh, the factor for people when they've had that big kick of working so hard for something and then that's essentially taken away from them. It's, I find that the biggest struggle is you know, trying to stay motivated and positive, especially around business when uh, all my business is aimed to booking people in for shoots, scheduling mm. that, doing that. And now, you know, essentially, I can't, I can't book any dates in, can't organize and schedule things with people. It's really, you have to step back and go, right, what can I actually do to be productive? And that's the toughest thing to uh, kind of stay motivated and positive without having sort of the end things to schedule in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm definitely in the same boat, uh, boat as you, mate, just trying to wait or weigh up what options we do have. So for those of you that are listening straight, watching in the future, we're in week seven now. So we're actually waiting for quite a, quite a um, pivotal announcement to happen on sunday which was meant to be yesterday wasn't it but they moved it back to sunday um, and we're hoping that something's going to change there with lockdown restrictions have you got anyone who's kind of got in touch 
who wants uh, who wants work ASAP or or wants wants a wants a shoot fairly soon. I've got a, I've got a few people touch base, but with the, the current lockdown situation, there's not much you can offer them. So that's what mm. whatever comes out of the announcement, whether it's good or bad, whether it's August or October, I'm sure you feel the same as me. It's like right, at least you can start planning for it then. Yeah. So you can exactly. start putting things in place. You can start figuring things out. Is Work-wise, which, you know, as you know, is a big factor for all of us as uh, sort of self-employed people, is I've given me a chance to look at, look at things I wanted to do differently and things I wanted to change. Made some massive changes at the beginning of the year in how I structured my business. We brought in online booking systems, all those sorts of things, just upgraded things, which was making a tremendous difference and had this set to be sort of our biggest year yet. And then this is obviously a big hump in the road. but there's ideas I've had for a long time that I've not had the time, basically the time to put in the figuring out how to fulfill them for people is in the moment we're currently putting together a sort of a retention service for personal trainers, because I'm sure you found literally, even with doing things like this podcast, everybody needs so much content now, mm. whatever you're doing, whatever business you're in, you know, as a gym, a trainer, a model, you need constant social media content. So for the last couple of years, I've been trying to work out a cost-effective way to be able to supply this for people. And fortunately, I've sat down with a sort of lucky enough to have a lot of my friends be sort of industry leaders. So I can sit down, battle around ideas with them and figure out the best way to do it. So I'm super excited to be able to sort of put something together and launch that for people. Yeah. I mean, I guess the big, one of the big pluses I have over people just starting in the industry is... I've got a backlog of stuff to so go. One of the first things I did during lockdown was offer people the chance to buy up uh, pictures from old photo shoots. You think I've got 10, 12 years of photo shoots that are just sitting there mm. and it's great content for people for their socials, whether it's these throwback Thursdays or this sort of thing, or whether it's just general content. So that was really successful in the first couple of weeks. And then I still intend to try and, uh, use this time to touch base with people to see if they want anything from shoots we have done before or just to touch base and reconnect with people. You know, things like, uh, that's why it's so great when you got in touch about this, because again, we probably haven't, you know, spoken probably 10 years or so or something like that back from our modeling days, yeah. which I'm sure I've still got the shoot we did at your gym. I'm going to try and try and dig out for you at some point. But I mean, that's been the cool thing for me is to give me the chance to really focus on things I want to do, but don't have the time time to do yeah yeah I mean, that is that is a serious blast from the past and that uh, i actually um i actually did do a a little shoot a couple of years ago uh, just before my, my brother's uh, wedding which was it was kind of like it was the 10 years since i'd done my first shoot <laughs> and i thought oh you know what it would be good to see where i where i come up against myself in my 20s and uh, so i got myself in pretty decent shape and uh, it worked out okay and yeah, I wouldn't say I could ever go back to doing that kind of lifestyle again, going back to that, but um, it was a lot of fun and very nostalgic as well. And we bumped, I bumped into, and I did the shoot with a mutual friend of ours as well. So it was great to see him. It's been a long, long time. So but He's not changed, he's not changed a bit either though, has he? No, 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 no. And uh, yeah, he, he was great. He was, uh, he, he was great. So... I suppose when it comes to uh, being diverse and looking at these... You're kind of on your own with that because no one's written the rule book for this. You know, there probably isn't a big group of of people thinking like you're thinking right now, especially photographers that have that backlog of stuff that's still relevant. Most photographers will just have stock images or stuff like that, won't they? I mean, yeah, that's that's the thing is you go for every business. We're in uncharted territory. But like you say, uh, you know, what we work, we've seen so much change in the fitness industry anyway. It's proper, constantly having to adapt and navigate. And for a long time, because essentially, I think I was one of the first people to specialize in fitness photography. Mm. So, you know, for a long time, there was only a few of us doing it. And the plus is, as the industry's grown, it's become massive compared to, you know, I did my first bodybuilding show in 2000. So you're talking 20 years ago. Seeing how much the industry's changed and grown since then is phenomenal. And... I think uh, there's a problem where you can become complacent. You tick along. You can work, you can tick along based on just reputation, being the only person doing it, 
and having the network. So in some ways, this is great because it's forced me to have the time and the necessity to kind of adapt, change, and look at different things to do. I mean, another thing I've been working on is putting together a stock gallery just aimed at fitness. As wow. you go, I've got, I think I've only spent the last couple of days putting it together and it's already at almost 2,000 images on exercise, how to perform exercises. So I've got, for different companies and different clients we shot over the years, got hundreds of pictures showing how to perform a squat, how to perform a deadlift. And these are all useful for trainers out there. So it saves them having to go out and shoot their own. I've also got hundreds of pictures of food because one of the main yeah. things I've done as well as along with the fitness is, you know, I love food photography and stuff like that. And these are all things I can offer out there that help people at the moment when you can't get out and shoot your own content or you can't get out and do it. So it's putting together resources that I know will be able to help, help my client base. This has all been ideas that have been ticking over for years, just never had the time or the necessity to implement it. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's giving you that opportunity. The, the, the stuff you said there, that the massive fitness library and the, the food library as well, which is also probably aimed at fitness as well. That's amazing. That, that's not even something that would even come into my mind. So it just shows how, how your mind works, which is it's a superb idea. Would you, what platform would you use to, to kind of uh, market that? Man, I've got my own. I've got a, a platform where I host, host a proof galleries for people. So oh, wow. basically, I can set it up on there where you can buy per download. Or what I wanted to do as well was in with my package I'm putting together with coaches, I'm going to give them X amount of free downloads included with their package. So they're going to get nice. a, a package over the course of something like six months where they get multiple shoots. They can use these shoots for whatever they want, whether it's uh, lifestyle, physique, coaching, things like that. And in with that, they're going to get stock images so it's probably be 30 or 40 stock images a month included and then we're putting together a members a members bit on my website that's just going to have lots of videos with tips and stuff like that on how to use images best how to take your own images for things how to upload i see so many basic mistakes that i don't have really time to address with people it's for instance a lot of the time we'll we'll be producing these high quality images for people but because they'll, they won't know how to download or save them correctly, they'll simply screenshot on their phone, yeah. upload it to Instagram. And every time you're doing something like that, the quality is reducing. So you go, it ends up, the, the picture starts looking pixelated, the quality goes down. And you know yourself, whatever people view your brand of, they view it as a the quality they see. So if yeah. people are putting up pictures that aren't showing them at their best or aren't at whatever, it brings down the whole brand. So just having a chance and a platform to put together you know, I'm hopefully going to be doing sort of like a video or a couple of videos a week, just addressing small topics like that, storing, organizing your images so they're always there when you need them. All these basic things that I wish somebody explained to me 10 years ago when I was having to figure out hard drives and put things together, that just um, saves time for people. Yeah. What you said there as well is something that I feel very passionate about, and that's helping people um, that are starting out and not looking at people as competition and having a kind of a sense of abundance when it comes to uh when it comes to the level of work that is out there uh, and and just helping people up because i was in the same position when i opened up the gyms you know um, didn't had no idea and did it so wrong for so long until i eventually kind of threw everything at the wall and saw what stick what stuck um so, so that's actually a topic that's very close to my heart and probably um something i'm going to pick your brains about on a different podcast at a later date if, if you'd be willing um, so, I mean, what does it look like for you day to day at the moment? What's kind of your routine? I mean, to be honest with you, as terrible as it sounds, part of me quite enjoys the chilled, chilled life now. As you go, you know, last year, I think I did 30,000 miles driving around the country shooting people, wow. which is brilliant and I love my job. But, you know, I routinely drive, you know, Surrey to Manchester, back and forth and stuff like that. So it's kind of been nice to have that extra time of not having to drive. I mean, most of the time I'll w walk every day. We got a little dog, take him out for a good walk each day. Got a half decent uh, gym set up at home. We've got sort of a squat rack with about 140 kilo bar. I managed to beg, borrow and steal from a few of the gyms. Mm -hmm. So I've got enough to do sort of basic sessions. So for me, a fun day is I'll get up, I'll take the dog out, 
come back, chill out. I try and watch something uh, educational every day, whether it's just a YouTube video or reading something like that. Cause I'm like, just trying uh, anything you do to feel like you're progressing forward. Yeah. Right. And uh, I'll do that. Try and be proactive on my socials, just putting out content in general. Then normally eat, train. Afternoon, I'll do a little bit. And then literally I'll try and chill out, chill out with the family a little bit, relax and just kind of uh, use this time to recuperate, think and be a little bit more on the ball. So it's nice. My mornings are pretty much spent trying to get work done, train, and then I kind of just try and relax the rest of the day. You know, yeah. I, love, I love movies as well. And there's so many on your Netflix, your Amazon Prime, yeah. all of them try and chill out, chill out and catch up on a movie, whether it's an old one or a new one. Mm. And education-wise, is there, so you said you try and do something a bit educational here and there. Is there anything that's really kind of uh, stuck in your mind? Is there anything that's helped? No, not massively. Is I'll literally, I'll jump on YouTube rabbit holes, basically. Is uh, One day I'll go in, I'll just watch, you know, photography tutorials or behind the scenes or see what people are doing. Other times it's down the, down the rabbit hole of uh, sort of Instagram marketing, things like that. Mate, and then other days I'll just put a podcast on when I'm walking a dog. Sometimes it's trying to be something, you know, proactive and listen to creative ones. Other times it's listening to uh, Joe Rogan smoke weed and drink whiskey and talk yeah. shit. So, yeah. I mean, it literally, it, it will vary an awful lot. So just try and keep sort of mind and body active, I guess, is the main thing with that. Yeah, yeah, well... I've listened to plenty of Joe Rogan by now. And uh, is there anyone, when it comes to your creativity, is there anyone that you go to for that? Man, I'm quite a big fan of uh, Chase Jarvis. He puts out quite a lot of good content. And he was kind of one of the first ones who kind of opened the curtains on the creative industry and started showing the behind the scenes and stuff like that. So he's got some great, great content out there. And you know, podcasts and YouTube are great from him as well. Mm. I think, I'm, well, I'll give him a go. I mean, I'm not very, the one thing I'm not doing at the moment, I'm not listening to anything that's specific to my industry and I really should do. Um, I am when it comes to like, YouTube videos and stuff and when I'm having chats online, but there's something I'm going to start doing moving forward because I'm always going to the big names like um, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk and yeah. every now and then Tony Robbins just because they're easy to find. But I think I'm going to dig a bit deeper with my podcast because I want it to be more specific. Uh, I mean, I've not listened to, I don't really listen to any fitness ones either, but from my understanding, there's quite a lot of, lot of good ones out there is mm. I'll jump on uh, Jamie Alderton sometimes and have that, a good mm. listen on that. He puts out, you know, some great content. I've known Jamie for a good number of years. In fact, uh, went to his trainer mind seminar early in the year, which is get aimed at personal trainers and coaches. But I remember messaging him and saying, look, does, does this translate across to me and what I do? He's like, yeah. He's like, basically the principles are the same, no matter what you do, yeah. you know, that, that applies to everything. So that's why I'm like, right. I don't stick myself with just listening to uh, skill relevant ones. I try a little bit of everything and just pick up different things. I listened to another, you know, I fell into somehow listening to a lot of ex military stuff just because mm. I like the mindset of it. You start off on somebody like Jacko Willing, and then you transition and listen to a lot of different people. And it forces you to kind of analyze how you interpret and think about things. Yeah. Is, I'm sure similar to you is like when we were all younger, where you literally, literally were all hotheads and had these big tempers on us. And nowadays, mate, I can't remember the last time, you know, I got road rage or lost my temper. And, you know, I had it the other day where some, some guy wound me up in the supermarket. Just, it was a guy who lets you in on the door. And, Literally, a lady had said to us, they're not letting people in in couples. She used to separate. So we separated, went in separately, and the guy on the door let us in. And then he came over and spoke to us in such a derogatory tone, saying, you weren't going to come in together, keep your distance. And the entire time, going around the supermarket, I was stewing about that and thinking, right, and you're thinking, right, what's wrong with me? Why am I reacting like this? Is it me? Whatever. Left. While I'm waiting by the car, I literally see two rails kick, out, kick off with him. And I'm yeah. like, wow, that would have... That would have been me a few years ago, but it also, you know, it also wasn't my fault because that's the way he's interacting with people. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I to show that different stuff. You grow as a person because before, you know, somebody who had to drag me away, I would have been, been an asshole, kicking off. And now at least I can look at it and say, right, what am I doing here? How am I? Things like that. So I find so much of the mindset stuff 
is good because it forces you to analyze the way you um, the way you look at things and the way you react and the way you interact with people which i think transitions over to everything family business all them things so it's good i think it's definitely worth mixing up sort of the stuff you intake and the stuff you listen to oh definitely and they do say you know the way you do anything is the day the way you do everything right um, and yeah. if you're going to make if you're going to fly off the handle with something small you'll fly off the handle really badly with with anything when it comes to employees when it comes to work kids and it has been something that you know i have struggled with in the past as well um and i think when you are when you do train at a certain level when you do lift a lot of weights when you do bodybuild your testosterone naturally goes up the way that you're especially if you're dieting and stuff it makes you grumpy as hell anyway and uh i, I was always you know in a kind of a, i think i went for like five years of just being in a bad mood <laughs> uh which i'm so happy not to be in now <laughs> Well, I mean, if you think if you if you know if we still had that kind of mindset put in this situation, you just couldn't cope. It's no. uh, it's no scary to say the fact of you know literally similar to me, but your livelihood is in in the balance. You don't fully know what's going to happen. And I think a few years ago, I would have been the worst person to be around because I would be so stressed, so whatever. And nowadays, I'm like, don't get me wrong, I want things to go back to normal. I want my business to grow and get it back on track, but I'm much more malleable in terms of, right, that doesn't work and try something else and see what happens. Whereas before I would have just been worrying about stuff beyond my control. Yeah. Mm. And again, I mean, the crazy thing is I'm having a lot of conversations with people right now and it seems to be coming back to a mindset, which is, which is the, uh, the stoic mindset that, you know, the, the, the way of being able to just focus on what's in front of you and a philosophy that has come around since before Roman times, you know. And it's funny that you've addressed, you've you've spoken about about that. Well, you haven't mentioned stoicism or, or being stoic as such, but you've pretty much nailed down all of the terms that it means and what it stands for. Um, is it something that you practice at all, or is it something you've looked into? Well, there's two, there's two two books set on my desk. I've got the Daily Stoic, and yeah. I've got another one. It's I'm not consistent. But it is something that it, when I do pick it up and have a read, there is great value there. I really enjoy it. And it, it makes perfect sense. When you read this stuff that, God, you know, how many thousands of years old is it? And it makes absolutely perfect sense in the modern world. It's, mm. I do find it fascinating. I, it's one of the things I do want to work on is sitting down and reading more. Is I've probably got you know, a good set of books sat there that I really need diving into. And it doesn't take much. It's what, five, ten minutes a day, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that. Well, the crazy thing is, I have never been good at reading. And me and my wife went on a trip to New York just before the lockdown. Um, and we, we honestly got the trip the, the weekend before, uh, before they stopped slowing down flights and stuff. And there was even talk of our flight possibly being, uh, being moved because of what was going on. And I read the um, Ant Middleton, First Man In book, cover to cover, flight there, flight back, could not put it down and develop this love of reading. And, and the moment this has actually kicked off, I've actually made myself so busy, I haven't been able to read his second book. And it's doing my absolute brain, absolutely doing my brain in because it's sitting there, I want to read it, but I'm, I'm up at half five in the morning, I'm getting editing done, I'm doing this, and then booking people in as well as other bits and bobs and running my team. And all I want to do is read these books. It's doing, Driving me insane. Absolutely driving me insane. Yeah, man, I enjoy reading. I'll do it. When you're on holiday and you just sit there, I'm oh. happy to read. When you're, when you're at home, you feel like you should be doing something more productive. But I think there's so much benefit in carving out that time and just sitting down to read and to do whatever. Mm. In fact, that's what it, that clearly is what it is. It's a mindset, isn't it? When you put your holiday out and you, you say, well, that's my time to just do what I want and not care about anything yeah. else. That's, that's when you do have the time to just switch your brain off. And I love that. I absolutely love that. So is there anything... Um, I'm going to come into some questions now, which I, I think I warned about. I'll, I'll mostly warn most people about these, that they're coming, and give you a bit of time to have a little think about the answers. But has anything really, really helped you at the moment? Is there anything that has, has really stuck in your mind? Uh, I mean, it's literally just, uh, just sort of, giving me time to catch up with people a little bit more is yeah. my uh, my youngest sister had her first child in December 
So obviously I got down to see it a few times because they, they live down your way in Essex. And I've only been down a few times to, uh, to see it, see her, even shouldn't call it it. But literally making time to FaceTime her a few times a week, see, you know, see the baby, see how it's grown. It's cool. My um, a younger brother moved to the States about five years ago. Oh, so wow. again, I speak to him fairly, fairly frequently. But again, carving out time each day, which is what's quite nice, is it ends up knowing roughly what time he's up and about. Works out about 3 or 4 p.m. our time. Oh, so wow. it's good to have a little touch base with him chat, catch up, find out how things are over there. And then my dad is, again, he travels, so he's away for work at the moment. He's actually, uh, he's not made at home the entire entirety of the lockdown. Wow. So, uh, whereas when the, just before the lockdown, my brother was in Japan, he was uh, filming a film out there. So that just wrapped, they were able to wrap that early so he could get on one of the last proper commercial flights back into LA. So he's been in there on lockdown. My dad was uh, working up past Scotland, uh, sort of out of Hebrides, and then he travelled across, I think, to Denmark and has been around there. And basically, I think he's looking at potentially being able to come back in the next week or so. But he works out at sea, so he's back and forth. So he's yeah. either the safest or the most at risk, depending sort of yeah. what ships he's on. So it's, um, I think what's quite cool and helps keep me sane is just having that little interaction of how different it is for everybody everywhere. If I was stuck in my own little bubble and listened to the news too much or did whatever too much, is I think, uh, I think I'd lose the plot. I think limiting how much I read about it online and just sticking to the impactful statements, which is normally just uh, Boris's statements on the thing, because they're the only ones that impact us day-to-day life. Yeah. Worrying about all the other stuff of you know, where it came from or whatever, when... The internet's a great resource, but there's no qualification to write on it. Anybody can sit there and write on it. I could pull, I could pull up Facebook now and write the wildest theory about where I think uh, COVID comes from, and somebody might share that, and somebody might share it, and before you know it, people are believing that I said it was whatever. So I think limiting what you take in, and then the more, more you can speak to people and the more different accounts you can have, and the more normal interactions, I think, is the better. Yeah, yeah, I think totally. And uh, I think the interaction with the people that you love is probably the most important and the people that are, in, that are really relevant to you as well. Important and relevant, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard way to kind of siphon off who you should and shouldn't be spending your time with. But one thing that I have done is, is just been all negativity. Anyone that's negative on Facebook, on social media, just unfollow or mute for a little while. Um, I've got no time for it. And I think, I know that I'm a very sensitive character that I can't be around negativity or even look at it for a long period of time because it affects, it affects me. It really does. Um, so yeah, just contacting and staying in touch with the people that you love that are going to pick you up and just pay attention to what's relevant and stop with uh, mad conspiracy theories as well. I mean, that is a thing just to try and only intake the positive stuff because you go down massively sort of negative spirals. I think if you're, Anybody like us in the fitness industry, we're a bit all or nothing people. Yeah. Is you go mad, you know, there's going to be something, something wrong with somebody when we need to go to the gym, lift weights every day for most of our lives to keep us sane. Yeah. So not normal people, but you go all in on everything. So if I start taking in, or like you said, around too much negativity, it does drag me down. And it literally is, um, you know, I listen to a lot of, there's some brilliant just motivational things put together on YouTube and stuff yeah. like that is uh, obviously training at home in the garden is can't blare out any music because the neighbors already think I'm mad because I'm the one out there trying to strap weights to myself and do pull ups. <laughs> so I literally found a few good podcast channels that just had an amalgamation of all these motivational speeches and they're about an hour long. It's just a mix of all these different ones and mate, that actually amps you up even more than, uh, than sort of decent music because mm. you've just got the speeches over this iconic music. Come out of come out of training so jacked up. I do do everybody's heads in because I'm full of full of energy and fully excited to get on with the day. And everybody else is just waking up and getting a uh, getting back to normal. And I'm ready to jump jump around and do whatever. No, I'll tell you what. I I'm the same. I um I can't remember the last time I trained to music other than in the gym because I don't use headphones. So I will normally have 
uh, a podcast of some description. Uh, I've even trained to financial podcasts and stuff. But anything that kind of keeps my mind ticking and it motivates me more, loads more. But the inspirational stuff, I, w- I would actually really like to get a couple of links off of you if you could dig some out for me. That Because uh, I'd, I'd like to use that when I go back to playing rugby. Believe it or not, I, I still manage to get around the pitch um, okay. because I find that that pumps me up. I find it pumps me up, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, there is one more thing I do want to ask you, though, mate. And the last but not least question is the one I did warn you about. And that's if you could go back to when this all began and you could give yourself a piece of advice, what would that piece of advice be? It's, uh, I guess it would be discipline. Just the more structure you have, the more you, the more you get done. It's, so I feel, you, never, you never feel like you're doing enough. I never feel fully pro- productive. So. I'll have, you know, not a lot of the people call it a power list or something like that. I'll have a small list of things I need to do each day. It's before I'd end up writing down everything I had to do. Now, literally, I'll just take the, you know, three to five big things, have them there and make sure I tick them off each day. And it can be down to um, sort of silly things. It's like at the moment, one of my things is trying to get this uh, new service ready for coaches. So yesterday it was you know, re- recording, recording the intro video. I wanted to record that, send it to a friend of mine who does the editing, design the logo, and then I had one guy's edits to do for his extra pictures. So four things, not, you know, not massive amount to do, probably take me half a day, but just making sure I tick them off. I know that day's been a success. If I'd written down everything I possibly want to get done, which is a month's worth of stuff, I feel like I'd done fuck all because I didn't do that. So I think it is... Discipline and structure seems to be the most important thing. Where I had had a week where I kind of lost momentum a little bit. And you know, it's like you start having a few drinks and it creeps up on you. And it just ended up a funky week. I wasn't wasn't training properly, wasn't getting stuff done, just felt felt in a bit of a daze all week. And then it took me a while to get back on track. Mm. Well, I can fully, fully uh, relate to that. Word for word, did exactly the same thing. I've cut back on the booze in, started focusing on just chipping away at the small jobs. Um, I've done the same for the staff list as well. And you know what, that, that's a fantastic way for us to wrap up this, this, this session. So thank you so much for that, mate. Um, yeah, my pleasure. I'm, I'm going to close off to the, uh, to the listeners and the viewers now, but it's been an absolute pleasure. So those of you that are listening and watching, first of all, thank you so much. And uh, one of the things we do ask everyone, that if you have enjoyed this uh, podcast and you have enjoyed this episode please do leave us a cheeky comment below obviously keep it clean and keep it kind because that's what we're all about and that's what we want to promote as well if you do think that this could help someone that you do know please use social media for what it is made for and press that share button and get this out there so it can help other people in a similar position or situation also if you do have a voice and you feel like you would like to talk to me i'm still on a mission to interview 100 people i think we're just about to tip the 50 mark So if you are available, you would like to talk to me about your experience so far, please do either comment below or get in touch via ABC Gym. Simon, one more thing, mate. Where can everybody find you? My my best my best platform seems to be Instagram. And that's under my business name, which is S N H F O T O. So basically S N H photo with photo spelt wrong. It's cool, that's cool, fantastic. We will have links obviously to all of your stuff including your uh, stock site as well so people can access that have a little look about what you're doing as well as get in contact with you about some of the options for coaching and moving forward with that as well simon it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much i'm going to press stop record but we're going to have a chat after this so for you guys see you later